used to have some experiences that nobody can tell you that it's false. It's just like tell, me telling you that uh, you don't have a heart. Because I don't see your heart doesn't mean that the heart doesn't exist. I, I understand what I'm saying. It's there. And so we add that spiritual development. Because all these four dimensions is what influences your success, your well-being. You can have every money you have in this world, yet you may have some cancer or something, and the, the money is useless. It's just, it's just useless. Right? So when we say someone is healthy, it's not just physical, when you are bleeding or vomiting or running or something. It has everything to do with every other aspect of your life and how it influences your life. So I think that out of this form, mental health is the most important. Because that influences everything. Look at what is happening with COVID-19, right? Over the past two, three years, we've not heard about cholera. But before COVID-19, almost every year, we hear about cholera. Why are we not hearing about cholera? Because all the things that we are doing to prevent COVID-19 is what we should be doing to prevent cholera. The washing of hands, the, 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 not touching this, sanitizing and all that. They are, what do you call it? Um, um, you know, preventive measures. That is a healthy lifestyle. You know? and, and so, even when it comes to infections here, you realize that the mindset is so important. When we talk about mental health, what do we mean? How you think, how you feel, and how you behave. And that is mental health. Usually when you mention mental health, people are looking at <laughs> respectfully someone lying on the streets. You see, but mental health goes beyond that. It encompasses how you think how you feel and how you behave, and how that thinking or feelings or behavior affecting your life. So if you have a thinking or feelings or behavior that is causing you distress, it means you're in some discomfort or pain because of that. If you have a thinking or feelings or behavior that is causing dysfunction, it means you wake up, you don't feel like doing anything. No, you wake up and it's like you're messed up. You don't feel like bad, you don't feel like going anywhere. You really are, you know that no. It is not going well. See, is it causing damage? Is your relationship being affected? Your career, your family, your work, your find everything around you is being affected because of how you think, feel, and behave. And finally, is it deviating from social norms? So, any behavior that does not fit into any social space, the underlying problem may be on the level of mental health. Are you here with me? It goes beyond that. Because we live in a very, very typical, you know, religious environment. Usually, it is not, the problem is not religion, but the misinterpretation of religious things. So, for example, if someone is a Christian, you know, I can talk about Christianity because I'm a Christian, so I can still please something and not miss good things. For example, if you're a Christian and you are well, then you feel depressed. Or you are there, you feel some way, some way, having stream dreams here and there. What would you say? A spiritual right. When someone has schizophrenia, uh, respectfully, the madness will make problems, what would we say? Spiritual, right? And we may, if someone is unwell and it goes to the hospital or whatever, and they think it's spiritual, what would they do? They will pray and I'm one. Mm -hmm. Some people may not even go to hospital at all. But the question is that what does the Bible say? What does the Quran say? What does the you know, other religious things. What do they say about health? So usually it's really not the text itself, but the misinterpretation of text. Because even the Bible talks about holistic approach to healthcare. So when you take medications, it is not wrong. Are you here with me? Right? Let me, let me show you maybe there's one scripture about it. You know, Luke chapter 2, verse 52. It says, Jesus grew in what? Wisdom. In stature. In favor with God. In favor with all people. Wisdom is mental. Stature is physical. Favor with God is spiritual. And favor with all people is social. So, you realize that this scripture was just saying Jesus was healthy. Yeah. And that's all. And that is why he was very, very successful. You know, and the catch here is that you can be, you see, the word is grow. Right? Green. What it means is that we need to grow physically. We need to grow mentally. We need to grow socially. We need to grow spiritually. To be successful, you need harmony amongst all these things. Right? You can be spiritually strong but mentally weak because you are not growing mentally. And for us as psychologists, we know that if people don't grow mentally, 
everything around them is affected. Let me give you an example. If you have a baby, you know, the reason why we even advocate for breastfeeding is because a baby growing needs that warmth from the mother to grow emotionally. So whilst you are giving the baby breast milk and you are hugging the baby, right, you are providing emotional strength and security for the baby. That is going to affect them later on in life. Another example is that when a baby cries, the moment they cry, you give them breast milk. The moment they cry, you give them breast milk. They grow up with that psychology, that mindset that as for life, whatever you need, you must get it and get it now. If a baby also cries, ah, before you give breast milk, cries, ah, before you give breast milk, they are also growing mentally to think that as for life, you must struggle, ah, before you get. If a child is growing and you keep telling the child, you are smart, you are beautiful, you are doing well. They grow up to have a very a good self-image about themselves. But if you keep insulting them, you keep using their body parts against them, even if they are pretty, they grow up and think they are not pretty. So psychological growth is influenced by information and experiences. Information and experiences. So you are who you are because of how you were raised. If you were raised under another parent, your life may have been different. So you may be here and you may hate yourself just because of your past experiences. If you have a child and the child is hugged all the time, they grow up to feel very emotionally secure. They don't need friends to validate them before they feel emotionally good. If you were neglected by parents or parents didn't give you attention, you grow up seeking attention from friends. So that if they don't give you the attention you need, because of the gap that parenting has created, you feel very, very, very you know, isolated. And the little things you are telling, the little thing you are hurt, the little thing because emotionally, that growth and development, they didn't go well. So regardless of how spiritual you are, you realize that you may have a dysfunctional, you know, a emotional growth or mental growth, and that can affect you. Are you here with me? And your mental health is important. Your thinking is what decides everything. Like I told you this morning, the way you are dressed is based on how you think. You may have a dress, another person may never wear it because when they see they like what kind of dress is this? But maybe it may be your best clothing. The difference is how you think. Are you here with me? Right? And so a lot of kids are growing physically, but mentally they're very, very weak. And a lot of people are also married, but they are too damaged for marriage. Even if they find the right person, the right person will struggle to handle the damage. Because they've had too many bitter experiences with parenting as growing as children. Unfortunately, as they're growing up, every relationship that goes out also created more wounds and damage. So they carry the pain and the wound into the next relationship. And that creates a lot of problems for them. Because adults are a reflection of their childhood. Did you hear that? Adults are a reflection of their child. Think about it. One person will just pick a gun one day and enter a house, shoot everybody and go. The reason why it's unimaginable for you is because you have no past from where they passed through. So for them, it's easy. It's normal because that is what they are exposed to. So when I go for the ceremony, I become very, very scared because that child will be celebrated to be the next uncle because Abraham Robert was celebrated at death. What happened to them? It wasn't money. It was raising them for them. Are you here with me? So mental health is virtually everything. Please go ahead. So if someone is mentally healthy, there are six things we look at to determine. One, they should be able to cope and adjust to life situations. So anyone who is struggling to cope with life and changes in life, you come to school, you're struggling. Hope you are struggling. With friends, you are struggling. No detail, you are struggling. It means that mentally are not healthy. Anybody who is mentally healthy, they should be able to cope and adjust with life situations. Two, they should be able to form and maintain meaningful relationships. So all relationship issues are a mental health. It's a reflection of a person's mental well-being. So parent-children kind of relationship, 
siblings related relationships, boy girlfriend relationships, father relationships, relationships in class, in school, relationships at work. Every single relationship dynamics eh, and how it is handled is a reflection of a person's mental well being. Because if you're mentally healthy, your relationships will go well. Your relationships will go well. There okay, are people who come and see me and realize that no, the two of them are just not, eh, they just can't relate. Because of their difference. You know, and little things become big things. Big things become small things. <laughs> then also, if you are mentally healthy, whatever you see in the mirror, you are happy with it. Your internal and external qualities. So if you are not confident in yourself, you don't love yourself, you don't even like, love how you look, you always need the likes of people to feel good about yourself. It's a sign that mentally you are not healthy. Three, if you are mentally healthy, you should be able to dream and achieve those dreams. You should be able to come up with your own dream in life, to be able to strategize and achieve it. And that is why for all counseling, you know, units, they will add career and guidance counseling. You know, yeah, that's all I'm saying. Because your ability to dream and achieve those dreams is a reflection of your mental well-being. Five, you should be able to live independently if you are mentally healthy, according to your age. So we look at age groups, we have infants, we have children, we have adolescents, we have young adults, we have adults, we have elderly. According to your age group, we expect a certain level of independence. So if you are overly dependent on others at this particular age, we can say mentally you are not healthy. Because if you are mentally healthy, you should be able to wrap your head around life yourself with little or no help, according to your age. Then finally, if you are mentally healthy, your presence in any social space will not threaten the peace and security of the place, but rather add on to the place. So at home, you should be the one who creates positive experiences at home. You shouldn't be the problem at home if you're mentally healthy. If you are in class, you know, you, your friend, because anyone who is mentally healthy, wherever they go, they want to make a difference. They want to see changes. They want to make sure that things are going on well. So everybody, you see, any behavior you will describe as bad behavior is under mental health. Because it's a reflection of a person's mental capacity. Right? And so sometimes you think about why do people do the things they do? It's a function of their mental capacity. That's why they do the things they do. So these six things reflect a person's mental capacity. And if someone is mentally unwell, you realize that some aspect of these the six things I've shared with you, there will be some problems with it. At this point, can I ask, are you mentally healthy? <laughs> mentally healthy. Yeah. And think about it. All these things I've mentioned, we make it a personal issue instead of a health issue. Nobody goes to their clinic and says, Doctor, I'm struggling with my relationship, help me. Because we don't know that that is, is, is health, and that there are professionals who have been trained to deal with all that. For example, we have a constant guidance unit in the school, <laughs> and they can fix your problems easily because they've been trained to do it. But students will never go there because they don't know that it is part of health. It's just like you having malaria and say, I won't go to the hospital. You will die. In the same way, a lot of relationships are dying because they're just not seeking help. But we make those issues a personal issue. Nobody walks into us and says, look, I'm sad, help me. Because we don't know that it is a part of our health and there are professionals who have been trained to help you deal with that. And so people, unless they are overwhelmed and they realize they can't take it anymore, then they go and seek help. Last week, I had a couple who had been married for 17 years. You know, and they wanted to divorce. Right from day one, the issues, issues here and there. And I look at them, we have two good people who are doing well, but they just can't live together. And I told them that the problem is not the two of you. It's the fact that along the line, you guys need to help. So they fix the problem themselves in a bad way. Now they've come to a point where they think they can't live together again. If they had walked into the hospital and said, I want to see a therapist, they wouldn't tell me where they are. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So most of the things that you may think is a personal issue, it is a health issue. That if you just seek help, you wouldn't be where you are.
For example, you are struggling with your dreams. <laughs> you can walk and tell and speak to any, any counselor or psychologist and no, I have a dream. I don't know how to go about it. I'm distressed. What do I do? And that is what they have been trained to do. I remember when I was in medical school many years, I think around 2005, they about. You know, I had a what do you call it? Or something trouble studying. Because anything I study, I forget. I had to go and see the counselor who was in charge of her. And then she helped me. And we don't know that those things are health issues. You know, and that if you seek help, you won't get to where you are getting to. Some people are very, very bitter about their past and their parents, and because of that, every relationship they enter into is, they are, is, is affecting them. But if they just go seek help, you know, things will, will get fixed before things become help. Please go ahead. So, there are many forms of mental problems. We have anxiety issues, fear related, all fear related issues is and mental health. I know a guy who early exams, he becomes extremely afraid that he was almost always failing his exams. So we had the diagnosis, we had to, we have exams related anxieties, whatever. We spoke to the university and they allowed him to write the exams alone in his room. Obviously, and as I'm saying, he was he passed all his papers. But these are anxiety related problems. So all fear related issues are the matter, mood issues like depression. Then psychotic is the normal madness related problems we know. The neurodevelopmental problems uh, has to do with, you know, when children are growing from the womb. Everything that happens to the child affects their social skills and everything. You know, prolonged labor and the rest. It damages the brain. So the child grows up and cannot study because right through labor and all that, the brain was damaged. The neurocognitive is, you know, uh, mental health issues uh, amongst elderly. They get missing, they forget things and all that, like dementia. Then we have the sex-related problems, personalities, all sex-related issues are mental health. Addiction to sex, premature ejaculation, and all those things. Uh, pornography addiction, masturbation addiction, all those things are abnormal sexual behaviors. They are all under mental health. Then also eating problems, sleep issues, substance use disorders, you know, impulse issues where people, you know, they, they are impulsive and they can't control their impulses. You know, like the Tomania, and every medical problem you can ever think about has a dimension is under mental health. Then we have abuse, work related issues, career finance, family and marital conflicts, and pregnancy related problems. They are all under mental health. So that is how extensive it is, including all these problems we have talked about can tip someone into suicidal behaviors. Are you here with me? Myself and Watma have been doing a lot of work together. And for some months now, we've been attending to kids in one of the regions who are, are who have been, some of them have been attempted to kill themselves. So far, I think we have almost about 40 kids who have planned or attempted or wanted to kill themselves. And they are between the age of, I think, 8 and 12, 12 or 14. Yes. One of the girls who walked in, you know what he said? You know she's a trouble child. He said two years back, the father called her, her and told her, oh, we need some wedding. Your, your face looks like an animal. If your father tells you that, think about it. There was a girl I met sometime, a 21 year old, who mother called her at eight and told her that you, I gave that to you by mistake. You will not amount to anything in this life. Since eight years, she's been trying to kill herself. But this, this lady, for example, if someone had brought her to the hospital, right, she would have received her a long time. I know an eight, a 31 year old girl came to see me, woman came to see me. You know, she was raped at age eight. She became extremely afraid of guys. She can't work in the same office space with a guy alone. No. Anytime she does, she panics. You know, and because of that, she said she talked to girls were safer. She started dating girls. She became a lesbian. But she was having these panic attacks around men. See, so, a lot of things. That our listener here can tip anybody into having suicide after. Are you here with me? Please go ahead. All over the world, we may have more than you know, you know, uh, seven hundred thousand people, you know, having you know, di being diagnosed. As I said, seven hundred seven uh, more than seven hundred million people with diagnosed med mental health issues. When I say diagnosed, majority of the people are not diagnosed because we really don't go to hospital. Look at how expensive it is. Imagine everybody who is going through this in this school goes to the hospital, his values will go up. Right? And if you look carefully, the mood problems and anxiety related issues is found more in the women 
But the substance use problems and schizophrenia is more in, in, warfare, in, in, in what you call it. In men. See, especially when it comes to marijuana, you know, abuse, smoking marijuana in those things, is one of the major you know, causes of schizophrenia. You know, so those who think that marijuana is safe, especially young people now, they are putting it in drinks and this and, and they are drinking. You know, and now I have a 50 something year old man who is being taken care of by the mother because he started smoking marijuana when he was young. Now he has schizophrenia. You know, and we see all of them all the time, you know, in the hospitals. So marijuana use has become an important risk factor for mental disorders and subsequently suicide related behaviors. Okay. So please go ahead. So when it comes to suicide, suicide is when someone intentionally or purposefully want to end their lives. It means that they think about it for days. And when they feel that there is no way out of the things that is affecting them, then they want to die. And usually the reasons why they want to die is not simple, very, very complex. So for example, in school, you hear that a lady, you know, maybe had a relationship breakup and she's attempting suicide. Usually it is not just one factor. That is the reason for the suicide, but multiple factors. But one of the factors become the straw that broke the camel's back. Are you here with me? Usually it's not. So for example, this particular lady who attempted suicide in, in one of the universities referred to me, right? Apparently, her boyfriend left her and all that. And when she came to my office, it is not just boyfriend walking away. She's been having problems right from childhood, parents and all that. And academic issue find out plenty of problems. Now we met this guy who appeared to be everything for him. And this guy also walked away. So it's really not the walking away, but what he's walking away from. Are you here with me? But if it's these guys, no matter who the guy is, you know, there's someone who is nicer and better. You see, and usually the reasons are multiple, they are very, very complex. And that is why you can't just tell someone, get over it. If it was easy getting over it, you would have gotten over it a long time. Yeah. And when it comes to mental disorders, in addition to the issues they may be going through, there are all kinds of brain changes and neurochemical changes that influences behaviors. So for example, when it comes to depression, there are all kinds of brain changes. There are neurotransmitter changes here and there that is responsible for it. One of them is called serotonin. If, for example, I hug you right now, right, and we are cool, and I hug you, the hug feels good because the body releases a chemical called oxytocin. It's the oxytocin that is responsible for your feeling, not the hug itself. So warmth, eh, or you are sleeping and if your father hugs you or something, it's nice, right? Yeah. I don't want to say your boyfriend hugs you because he must not be doing this at this stage of his life. <laughs> I don't want to be cause any problems. You know, but you have to understand that when someone feels down, it may not just be the issues, but there are all kinds of changes in the body. When it comes to even addictive behaviors, there's a chemical called dopamine. I'm sure you've heard about dopamine alone. You know? Dopamine is responsible for almost all the addictive behaviors we know. Now, maybe when it comes to cheating or infidelity, right? Now, research, some research are pointing to the fact that those who are consistently unfaithful, they are more dopamine receptors than the usual population. <laughs> So there are all kinds of things that influences the person's behavior. So you cannot, that is why you cannot oversimplify someone's issues and you know, reduce it or minimize it or trivialize it as though you know, it's just that. And research has shown that majority of the people who commit suicide or attempt suicide or die by suicide, I will go say commit suicide, say die by suicide, majority of them have depression. And that is why decriminalization of attempted suicide is important. Because if someone wants to die, you know, there's a reason. We need to be able to fix the person and not put the person in jail. Because they have a problem, and that problem is fundamental. So attempting suicide is a psychological emergency, just as heart attack is a medical emergency. So someone is having a heart attack, you know, it's a medical emergency. No, we have to save the person quick, otherwise the person will die. In the same way, in the mental health, one of our emergencies is attempting suicide. So why would you say, oh, you have a heart attack, go to prison? One is under physical health, the other is under mental health. 
And that is why now, by God's grace, the law criminalized attempted suicide. There are all kinds of things to change it. Now it's being considered, you know, the change has begun. That's why now when someone attempts, they don't send them to prison, they send them to a cell phone to help an evaluation. Right? And so that is it. And women attempt suicide three times more than men. Men die four times more from suicide than, than women. Men die by suicide four times more than women. But women attempt three times more than, than men. You can give me the reason. Women are attempting more, but the men are dying four times more. When it comes to suicide, men, men are dying more from suicide than, than women. Who can? Yes. Okay, I think uh, with men, I think that there's a notion that a man is brave. Therefore, whatever comes with me, you should be able to solve it. So whenever a man goes into trouble, a person finds it difficult to uh, open up to his fellow colleague so that the person can get a, a solution to that. So that's why they attempt. So one of the reasons is that men really don't seek help. Men really don't talk about issues. A lot of men are really going through problems. A lot of men. You know, I went to uh, this I was so kind to try and fix, you know, my team. Big mistake. <laughs> you go there. And it's like the IT. Everybody will come back. Change, wait, change, wait, change, wait, change, wait. And change, wait, it's like, like, before I write, they can dismantle your whole car and then move past for you there. And at some point, I was there. And I said, no, don't change it. Before I realize, they've come and they are changing, they are fixing. And I, I got helpless at some point, and I was just watching them. Hey, change, 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 like that. You know, at some point, at some point, I had to pause. And it don't know me that you have hustling men. I'm sure one of them just needs money to provide food for that evening or go and pay a school fees. So at some point I just allow them. Because I could spend some few cash here and there. So I just allow them. Right? A lot of men are going through a lot, they don't talk about it. Women are likely to talk about it. Are you with me? Women like to have clicks and girls here and there. Men really don't. Men are likely to go sit somewhere and talk about football and talk about their personal issues. Women are not likely to do that. So that's one of the reasons. Another most important reason is what? Anybody? I will try to use more effective means. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It's one of them. With alcohol, there's something called impulsivity. Impulsivity means that if it wasn't their alcohol, they wouldn't have done it. But when they are drunk, they don't know they are doing the throwing that they are there. Impulsivity. But there's another reason which is most important. Like I was saying, men use more effective means. You know, women are likely to use their chemicals and things like that. So by the time they are screaming and dying, someone come and save them. You know, if you find a woman, Die by hanging, it's no suicide. Someone killed her and hanged her. Because women are not likely to go and hang. Or when they stand at a height and jump, no, women are not likely. If they do that, they think that the problem is really <laughs> that kind of thing. So that is also another another reason. But you know, men in terms of suicide is very significant than even women. Once suicide, you know, by the time someone dies by suicide, and 20 more are attempted. We lose one person by suicide every 40 seconds. So by the time this meeting ends, there are multiple people all over the world who have committed suicide. One every 40 seconds. And again, sex suicide is the second leading, now it's even the third and fourth, is the fourth leading cause of death among 15 to 29 year olds. But second leading cause of death, single cause of death amongst men under 45 years. So, suicide, dying by suicide is one of the most important killers of men. You see, this meeting, for example, if you can look around, the girls are about 99%. The men will show up. Meanwhile, there's a man being in the room. This would have helped him. But men really don't come. When it comes to infertility issues and stuff, 
The women are likely to go to the hospital for all kinds of life. The men will never come. But most of the times, even the men will not come at all. No, so men really don't seek help. In our healthcare setting, we have all kinds of, we have a whole unit dedicated for women, of second unit, but there's no unit dedicated for men. You see, so if you look at this, uh, uh, Millennium Development Goals and all the SDGs and all that, you realize that there's a whole about two or so, three you no know, goals for women and children, but it's not for men. You see, and so um, in terms of you know, dealing with depression and all those, you realize that men really don't talk, they don't seek help, but suicide is so important. And a lot more women are attempting, which is very, very significant. Because all, all those who are attempting succeeded, you have more women dying by suicide than men. Are you here with me? Right? So that is very, very significant. But I told you, usually it's multiple factors. So anyone who has any challenging difficulties with life, they are likely to commit suicide. So for example, they have this severe back pain, or they have this uh, cancer or something, and uh, the challenges of managing it becomes difficult. They can decide to commit suicide. Right? So some of the causes of suicide is what I'm talking about. One, any challenging life event. They can be health-related problems or psychological problems or anything. Two, any major loss. Any major loss. A loss of a loved one, relationship, a career, a, a, a whatever. Any major loss can create problems. Three, any traumatic event. Any traumatic event like rape, like abuse, and those things can, can influence uh, suicide behaviors. Four, you know, and, and, and there's something called cognitive distortions. And the inappropriate way of, of thinking about events. When people are too negative about things, you know, they make a mountain out of everything. And so that they become overly overwhelmed by things which they shouldn't be overly overwhelmed by. Right? So if they are very negative or illogical or irrational about things, for example, fill an exams, God, why me? I don't think my future will amount to anything. It's not true. It's not true. People feel like they do well. Oh, he left me. Oh, man, he left me. Why do all of them do this to me after all the things I've done to you? And all men are the same. It's not true. Right? You know, so a very, very negative way of thinking about things can influence certain behaviors. Right? Maybe you're having financial issues and stuff, you feel nobody loves you and stuff. It's really not true. You have people who love you. Maybe they may not support you the way you want, but you have people who love you. So when people are very, very, you know, negative about events, it can affect them. Then when someone has some diagnosed mental disorder like bipolar, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, stress, and those things, alcohol use and substance use can be a major risk factor for suicide behaviors. Okay. So Four out of five of every suicide could have been prevented. Four out of five of every suicide could have been prevented if someone is paying attention. So what are some of the signs that you must look out for, symptoms you must look out for, for someone who is suicidal? It's more on the slide. But I'll mention that and tell you how to deal with it and I'm going to. Oh, somebody. Please, my right. Okay, so what do you look out for? One, the only sign that someone may be thinking about suicide is that anybody who is going through a challenge that you know about is likely the person is thinking about suicide. So that may be the only sign. The only sign, and so for some people, the only sign that may be a proof that they are thinking about suicide is that when you see anybody going through a challenge, it's likely they are planning suicide. That may be the only sign. Because there are some people, you may never know, they may never show. So they are your classmates, and they come, you come, maybe, ah, you know, at least we're smiling yesterday, you. and how come? So the only sign sometimes that you, you, you see, that you know that someone is planning suicide, is when you notice that the person is going through challenges, because they may be a planning suicide. That be the first one. Two, they may write about it. No, they may leave notes, or now because of social media stuff, they may write things. So you go to someone's status, and there are always negative things there. There are always negative sad music, you know, posted there. Always something there. They will make these certain notes and here and there about something that is really bad about them, you know, and they may be a sign. Three, they may talk about it. So they may come to you and talk about it. 
that I feel like dying, I, I, I may kill myself, they may express it in their body. Four, they may, you know, they may seek attention about something. So you may be there, this person may come and share very personal deep challenges they are going to, you know, in a way of seeking some kind of attention or support from you. You know, and some of them will do that and open up to people who feel that they must be listening to them. And when all those efforts fail, then they feel that nobody will listen to them and they die. The fifth one is something that, uh, what do you call it? We say there's no sign at all. <laughs> but some, we call them the true suiciders. The true suiciders, they will not even show any sign. Or the only thing we see is that they may be socially withdrawn from the important things that they should be able to do. And they should be attending to. So they are home and realize that they may be in the, in the room. Or usually, you know, like if it's not usually this person, what she does. Or maybe in class, realize that there's some change in behavior in class. Instead of coming to class, they are not there. Even if they come there, they come there by themselves and stuff like that. So any change in behavior, it may be a sign that the person is trying to kill themselves. Okay. So what is the approach in managing? You don't have to change it, it's okay. I'm not. What is the approach in managing things like that? First of all, we need to recognize that anybody trying to die by suicide is a health issue. So the approach is that they must go to the hospital for help. You cannot, if you have a friend who is suicidal, you cannot attend to that friend in your hostel. It's just like your friend who has you know, malaria and you know, is dying and says, no, I am attending to my friend in the room. The friend will die. So when it comes to suicidal behaviors, as much as possible, you as a friend, provide a listening ear, be there for the person, listen to their concern, but insist and advise and encourage that they go to the hospital to see a professional. Thankfully in this school, eh, you guys have a counseling and guidance unit. You know, and the head of the place and the people they've been employed there, they have been trained. Suicide prevention and management is one of the training of people that in mental health. Right? So they need professional help. So that these are the first steps. And in terms of professional help, when someone is suicide, usually they will keep the person you know, in the in the world. Maybe for a day or two or three, depending on what the issues are. Then we institute the therapies or the management whilst the patient is on the world. Because we need to keep the patient in a safe environment so that they don't have access to things they can use to kill themselves. It's just like someone coming with heart attack. We don't say go home and heart attack. Go home. You'll be fine. No, we don't do that. We need to be able to save the person. So for example, I received a message from a, 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 a girl's mother. And apparently I saw the girl about you know maybe about once or twice. So the mother sent me a message that the girl has sent to her, thanking everybody. I thank this person for the help. I thank thanking everybody in this world. Then unfortunately she mentioned my name, thank you being there. Tell, tell the doctor that I'm sorry. Hey, you know, then I knew the person was serious. The person had left home. Left home and switched off her phone. I think there was one number P, which only few people knew about. Thankfully, I also knew about that number. So I was coming for speakers, I was rushing, then I was afraid if I called, let her pick, let her pick. Then I called, thankfully she picked. Where are you at? Samuel, pass Samuel. She, she didn't have any money, so she was walking, so she wanted to go to the beach to drown herself. Because when she drowned herself, nobody will even see her for some days before she maybe will appear somewhere. So she was on the way. So that one is not like, oh, where are you? Don't worry, everything will be fine, don't worry. <laughs> I said, where are you? Since I have reached here, I had to leave everything, try to the place. I said, please, you give me one chance. Give me one chance, let me try and fix this. So I went to the uh, uh, went to pick her from the place. And so I detained her for some time, and now she's still alive. Are you with me? She's still alive. So that is the approach. Then also, depending on the cause of the problem, right, we may give medications to the person. Right, if it's depression and stuff like that, we give medications to be able to deal with that. Then they will see a therapist to be able to help the person cope and adjust with whatever is keeping them to have some suicidal thoughts. I hope you understand. 
but friends and families would have to be engaged on some level to be able to fix the reasons why the person wants to commit suicide. But I want to encourage all of us that life is in stages, and sometimes when things don't go the way we, we, we want it to go, so far as there's something called tomorrow, there can be change in whatever situation that we find ourselves. Thank you very much for your time. So people who don't have financial support, we have a way of, of handling them. So finance should be a problem. And again, uh, it is legally binding on someone who is attempting suicide to get to the hospital. Because the law is against you doing that. So if the law is sparing you, you must make the effort to seek help. Are you here with me? Right. But finance shouldn't be a problem. When you get to the hospital, we have the way of, of attending to people like that. Yes, and for your counseling unit, it's free. You know, for your counseling unit, it's just free. And you know, there are things that the counseling unit can do for you. I have no idea. Me, for example, I'm a medical doctor because someone actually counseled me. Like, I only need to have a medical school. And I thought, well, now when I see a teacher, I'm very, very grateful. I'm planning something very nice for you. I'm going to be really surprised. I'm really. It would have been only time event. So please take advantage of your counseling unit. A lot of things that you would you would you would get to experience there that you won't get to anywhere. Most of your struggles are unnecessary. You think God is teaching a lesson. You have said your own questions and you are struggling. God is not even involved in whatever is happening. Just help. Yes. Uh, please, my question is that I have a friend who has been suicidal for two years. Um, he has been suicidal for two years. Um, should be like if I don't if I don't have a, if I don't have sex with a guy I cannot sleep or I can't stay without a guy. So such a person, what should she, um, should what should she do? Sorry. Uh, well, we need to be able to situate why, and that that's why uh, you know after a session with a mental professional, we will know. Right. We have all kinds of things. Uh, there, there are all kinds of sexuality addictions that it goes all the way back back. So we need to. Uh, so, if they go to the center, right, or see a, a therapist, they will have to make a diagnosis as why. Because obviously, it's too much. Obviously. <laughs> and well, maybe. <laughs> maybe. But, but we always have to get to the bottom of it. If they go on the woman, they were child, they child, whatever happened to them till now. And if it's affecting them, maybe it means it's a problem. The reason. For her, she's seen nothing wrong with it. Uh, well, what, with, with that, nothing or something, a, a professional would have to have some discussion with them to find out. Because sometimes people, the sufferer themselves, may not notice that there's a problem. The sufferer themselves may not notice. I hope you understand that. And people like that may get into multiple sexual behaviors, and that can be a return of all kinds of things. Yes. Okay, so my question is that um, so far we've learned that we are being made of aware of what could be um, going on with us and how to seek help. So what about the um, situations where you open up to someone and then they use it against you? Like how you said, the girl, the girl who wrote those uh, thanking everybody uh -huh, and you were able to help her out. Not all situations go like that. You can open up to somebody and then the person uses uses it against you, or later um, mocks you for what you told that person. 
So, and beforehand, you, you wouldn't know that somebody is going to use it against you. Uh -huh. So, what can be done? Those people to, are we to raise awareness for them? Or, yes. I will say they shall be here too. <laughs> Maybe there's someone here like that. But you know what? What, what I advise is that, it's the sensitive issues that is significantly affecting your life. It's better you disclose it to a professional. It's safer. Because for our training, confidentiality is torn. And we, we, there are some sort, I even really forget, sometimes you can't say, no, guys, look about it. Then, while they, are talk, while they are talking, then they start coming to my because we don't keep things, we don't record things. It's very, very private. So if you go to the council unit, your issues won't come out. Right? No counselor who is correct or trained well will do that. I hope you understand. So for sensitive, important issues, it is, it is better you don't talk to a friend. And that friend later may even go against you. And people talk, actually. You know, people talk around, hey, you know, it's more possible like that. So for important things, it's likely, it's just like having malaria and saying, I'm going to speak to your friends about it. You know, you may die. They're going to say, take the oh, last time when I was sick, doctor gave me this medication, so try it and see. <laughs> you understand? So it's better. And be, be quick to go to the counseling center to talk about the important things to you, uh, about you, so that nobody will use the issue. But we, we don't use things against anybody. It's the things that are ethics to do that. Yes. Yes, there's someone there. Yes, sorry. So, about the factors that indicate a person who is mentally healthy, you mentioned that they should be able to cope and adjust with life challenges. So, what if I have tried, I am mentally healthy, but then the situation is so much for me that it's breaking me down? Does it mean that I am not mentally healthy or it's because the problem is too much? I will also, the problem may be too much for you. So three things, one, it may be too much for you, one, two. It's possible that your coping strategies are not effective. Or three, you may use something called dysfunctional coping strategies. Where that coping strategies will end up causing more problems for you. So regardless of the problem, at any point in time, if you realize you are overwhelmed, at that point, it means that mentally you are not healthy. I, I did say you have a disease. You see, we have mental illnesses and issues that are mental health issues. I hope you understand. A disease is when you see a therapist and you have been diagnosed. For example, you have bipolar, you have depression, you have anxiety. But for example, if today you wake up and you are don't feel cool, you are all over the place, everybody is annoying to you and all that. At that point, you see your emotions and thinking is not good enough and it's affecting your others. So at that point, you have a mental health issue but not a disease. You get my point, right? And so if you have an issue that is on the level of mental health, like it may not be a disease because it doesn't satisfy any diagnostic criteria. Right? Most of the things we deal with are mental health issues because it's on the level of thinking, feeling, and behavior. Is it okay? It's just like someone, for example, a physical health, someone who has a headache and there's nothing really with the headache. It's just that they may be just having some headaches. It doesn't mean you have a disease. But you have a physical health issue of headache that, that particular time. And when you take drugs, the headache will go down. In the same way, mental health, we have issues, we have illnesses, and we have to be able to differentiate between the two. Yes. This is Professor Nishi. Thank you so Someone who is on internet. Internet is full of all kinds of things. And you don't have you have no idea people are tracking you and who are doing things. You know, when, for example, my phone is connected to my desktop, it's connected to my car tape, it's connected to my TV, and it's connected to a, 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 a computer at my work. And I realize that when I click on, when I search maybe a music, 
YouTube in my house on my TV. By the time I go to work, if I'm searching for music on YouTube, the first thing that comes up is the history of my TV at because everything is linked. So far as you, you Google, you have you sign with your Google account, it links up every kind of device. And that is how, how serious internet is, is not a joke place at all. There are things that you have to disable on your on your phone. There's a certain you have to put on, on your phone so that nobody can be listening to you or be watching you like versus watching you. Do. You see, your next of someone can switch on your camera without you knowing and be viewing from wherever they are. That is how serious it is. So the internet is one of the most dangerous places to be and to be sharing very sensitive issues. Right? If you think people will spend your issues, so you need a random person who doesn't know you. And it's best to see a professional you can even identify. Because if anything comes up, at least you have a, a, a place to go to. Right? And someone can share something you said, you have no idea who next you are going with and will be harmful to you. So that's on the internet, please. Be as discreet as you can be on the internet. I hope you understand. And usually every message you send somewhere, go somewhere. <laughs> it's always somewhere. You know? Okay. Please last two then I can run because of time. No, yes. Uh, my name is, I just want to ask, you know a friend who has a problem that you may recommend him to see a doctor or a specialist. But that person isn't ready. And there's nothing you can do with your capability to help the person. It's such an instance, what do you do? I will keep talking to the person until they agree. That is what I would suggest. Keep talking to the person until they agree. One day, you know, they may agree. It's difficult. When it comes to counseling, you can't force anybody to counsel. If it's hypertension and BP is up, you can tie the person and put the medication in the trip and the BP will come down. But when it comes to some of these issues, uh, it's very difficult. So keep, keep hammering it. And if there's someone else who the person respects, and you can ask the person to ask the person, uh, I think that's that you keep doing one day, you may succeed. If you don't succeed, that's how life is. You know, we don't succeed in everything. Yes. Can some of the traces be genetic? Yes, can some of the traces be genetic? There are some genetic risk factors for mental illnesses. So, for example, if you have a mother who, was, who had depression, you are likely to also inherit that, that, that problem. I hope you understand. Just like you know, you inherited your mother's eyes or the color or the hair. Whilst you're inheriting all those good things, you're also inheriting some of the bad things. You know, so you realize that mental health issues can run through families. So there's some genetic linkage to some of these mental health problems. Yes. That's what I wanted to ask. There was a last hand there, yes. Oh, you have it. Yeah. So Amma is a child growing up, and then she always wants to and her parents would beat her up. And they would tell her, no matter what you sleep, don't take water, don't eat plenty. But she doesn't do that, but yet she still works her day. Is Amma mentally ill or there is something else? Well, bed wetting has its own problems. Me, for example, I think I bed wetting till I was seven or something. something. Because sometimes you are there and you mean that to her. <laughs> so bed wetting has its own problems. You know, but usually when children are also going through some emotional problems, it can it can lead it can lead to that. And so the bed wetting itself may not be a better health issue, but the issues around it. Is it okay? But sometimes it's normal, with time we will just go. Because me, I remember but sometimes you finish and have to go and watch the best before your parents and forget them. But uh, I don't think I can so she usually takes in excessive drugs and any sharp objects she sees to cut hands off. But she goes to the hospital uh, to see a therapist. So even that she's not really taking into consideration what the therapist tells her because when she remembers the things that really hurt her and I try calming her down, she doesn't really listen. She just takes in the drugs. And hurt herself. Yeah, and that is how complex mental health issues are. Some of them are chronic. What it means that they stay with them for life. But we need to be able to reduce the risk factors and, and help them go better. So therapy helps people go better. Some therapies and some therapies may not succeed, not because they are not good, but for that particular case, they are not succeeding. And sometimes we have to refer to another person to also you know do something about it. 
Uh, me as a therapist, I don't keep someone when you know I've been trying and trying the best. You just have to reflect. Maybe your approach and yourself may not be uh, the best for that particular person. You are successful, but maybe not with that person. So you have to reflect. And when it comes to self injurious behavior, that's how we call them. When people are in a certain emotional state, when they cut themselves, it's as though the blood coming is the emotions coming out. You know, and it provides them with some false, you know, sense of relief. So you may find them, you know, having these self injurious, we call them self injurious behavior. It can be dangerous. One of the days, some of those injuries can lead to something else. I hope you understand. Yes, so I think we may have to refer to see someone else. Uh, if a therapist keeps like that and still be having problems, then we have to see someone else. Some, something else, yes. The last one, I keep saying last one, last one. <laughs> okay. Hey. I have a friend yes. who also has mental issues, but he says he has been to quite a number of hospitals and they keep on telling him that the therapists are busy and this, that they take his money for consultation and all that, and it looks like they are not doing anything. So, what well, my question is, um, the therapist in Ghana, most of you guys, we don't know you. It looks like you work outside more than in Ghana. And so I wanted to ask, where can I find your office? <laughs> My personal office. Yes. No, so, so, so now what we do is that you walk into any hospital. And walk into any hospital and ask that you want to see a therapist. Even if they don't have a person there they will refer you to the right place. If you go to this hospital and they delay, 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 you still can't see the therapist. Go to another hospital, like it or And that's how easy it is, because now we are widespread. You know, and thankfully in your school, you have the guidance and counselor, counselors around. And they are going to help you. I am at University of Professional Science, you know, and stuff. But walk into any hospital, they are likely to have someone who is in charge. If you go and they are not satisfied with what they are doing, Go to the next, the next piece. I hope you understand. It's unfortunate that we have to delay people like that, but I don't think it's the right thing. Yes. All right. So I really enjoyed the conversation earlier, but as I think from what I've heard, I want to know if a patient, if you have a patient and you speak to the person about their mental health or anything they are going through, do you sometimes suggest that the area of the facility in which they find themselves? They have to move from there so that they will improve whatever that they are going to do. Perfect. There's something I would suggest, especially if they have another place to go. If they don't have anywhere else to go, then that's a problem. Outside the country, we have these places where when you go, it's a new environment and you can really wear the lights and be away. But in Ghana, we don't have those. But if they have the needs or where else to go, we suggest it. But sometimes, if an environment becomes a consistent source of uh, uh, stress, you may actually move from that environment, especially if you can afford it. The last one, there was the last one here. Final, final. Final. Yes. Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, I have a question. Yes. 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 I have a you may be all over the place. It's fine. But it becomes significant when it is significantly impairing your function or causing you some distress. It may, what you may even describe as mood stress, maybe bipolar. Right? Bipolar, where at some point you're on top of the world, at another point the world is on top of you. So there should be a manic episode and a depressive episode. Right? So with that determination, when you see a therapist, like you know, the psychologist here. They, they do, we have all kinds of assessments to know whether it's significant or not. But almost every female goes through that at some time in the month. So even if you want to smile, you can't even smile because your hormones are all over the place. And if you are pregnant, it becomes worse. So this pregnant woman who would have to inhale, you know, a car exhaust fumes. <laughs> the part of car and will be so the fumes are your back. <laughs> The fumes are like you go in the hills. Oh, final, 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 final. Yes. Please, I want to ask is there a situation where a person uses this mental health issues to gain attention? Uh, well, some people can take advantage of their condition. 
you know, for example, some clients will come to the hospital and say, Doctor, don't discharge me now. Maybe like two, three days. Because whenever they are on admission, they, they get attention from their spouse. The spouse will some flowers and talk with the money. When they met, say, Oh, now if you are prepared. So obviously, some people would use you know, their condition to gain advantage. And I don't think that there's something we call malaria and all that. You know, and where people use all kinds of things to gain advantage. And people do that. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, what, what do you want to say? Oh, yes. On the other side of the first question I asked, what if you seek uh, professional help and you keep it from, let's say, your parent? Is that right? Oh, well, because yes. your parents tell you that there's nothing wrong with you in your family. I, I think you are even wise when you do that. What if they find out? No, no, so, so the, the counselor or the psychologist will, will work it out with you. And if your parents would have to come in, they will discuss with you with your consent first. And they know how to discuss things with your parents so that it doesn't get out of hand. I hope you understand. But if you are, if, if, it's between you and the therapist. And the therapist will not go behind you to discuss anything with anybody else except with your permission. If the therapist does that, you can even take the therapist to court for breaking confidentiality. You can see the therapist. But we don't do that. But if at some point you realize that some other person will come, will have to come in because the issue involves the other person, and by talking to other person, they think will become better, they will discuss with you first. If they are comfortable, fine. If they are not, they will. But they have a way of going about it. Okay. So thank you very much for your time. I'm grateful. Okay. You are saying okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For me. Is it because we are, we are in GID? <laughs> <laughs> it's about me. I'm, it's not your show. Sure. Your show, sure. I'm done. <laughs> so, hey, I'm, I'm done. It's not your show. Sure. Yeah, you are not intending me for your show. Sure. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. I'm Left us, I feel we can do it better in the Alright, we'll take the next presentation from one of our very own. She is a student and also a mental health activist. If you are ready for her, let's welcome Miss Sandra. Thank you very much for the opportunity and thank you for joining us today. We are very grateful. We are very fortunate to have one of the most wonderful counselors ever in GIG. He's all, always ready to listen to you. He's suffered from me a lot, but <laughs> we are all getting there. Mental health issue is a very uh, big issue that I think we are not looking at. Like, just like Dr. said, I think it should be treated as an underlying health issue. And I told my friend that I was coming here and I was going to talk and share my experience about mental health, particularly suicide. And one of my friends said, I think, that was one. And I made a post yesterday about me and the posters around, and I made a, a, a post that's funny um, about mental health. And my cousin said, I know people who are sending this guy as a work <laughs> So those are, it's funny, but those are some of the comments we get um, when we open up about mental health issues. That's why people would like to crawl into their shelves and never talk about it. That is what we're faced with, especially in Ghana, even with our parents. They don't, most of them don't have any idea about mental health. So growing up in a home like that, it's actually very hard, especially when you came from a very harsh or hard background like some of us did. And personally, I'm here to share my experience because I have tried committing suicide before. I took a whole bottle of death off 
I'm not trying to say, <laughs> I think that was the post, but I'm trying to tell you how serious it is in case you hear someone and you think that it's um, stories. Mm -hmm. And I've had mates in school, I've, had, I've lost a friend due to suicide, and I've had mates in school try to cut their wrist just to get away with life. As young as we were back then, I had an issue with, in school, and then the only thing I could think about is to die. So we had a well in school, and then I stood there looking at the well. I wanted to drown myself. That is how serious it is. Um, we need to open up. Most of the we, most of the reasons why we are not finding help is because we open up to the wrong people. So there are a lot of advocates out there saying that we should put. Um, we should be more particular about the career and counseling units in our school, especially in high schools, so that students could go there and talk about their issues. If you find yourself in the boarding house school, you don't have people to go to, your teachers are busy and all that, so you, you seek help from your mates, and at the end of the day, you end up finding the wrong counseling that could trigger you or lead to somewhere else. So um, we are fortunate, we have Mr. Osei Dako, as our counselor, he's uh, every day ready to listen to you and some of the peer counselors on volunteers. I'm a volunteer myself and I'm a digital content creator, so I'm, I'm actually advocating and using my platform to create more awareness and we need people on board to talk about mental health issues. It is a very serious issue. If you think that, um, because there are times that you don't you don't feel like yourself. And mind you, the people who commit suicide are the most happy. Some some of them are the most happiest people. So when you see me and I'm all over the place, I'm happy. Sometimes I'm going through a lot. But that is a way I can escape. Because I don't want to get gain pity from anybody. I don't want people looking at me like what is wrong with her. Some pe some people may be redrawn. That is how they are. I am my happiest when I'm battling something. So that are some of the things that people you should look out for when you have a mate who is overly excited. That is not like her. Like she's overly happy. She's all over the place, which is usually not not like her. You should know that the person is likely going through something. It's not always a, a case where the person is withdrawn. That is not always the case. So yes, and then when you talk to a friend and the friend is not helping. I, I don't believe that um, friends are, actually, there are some friends who will listen, but some of the words that comes out of your mouth will even put you up from opening up. So I would encourage that we seek professional help, not necessarily talking to friends, because some of them, and Ghana, when you say you have a mental health issue, they will say, oh, it's Kassem, it's Kassem. It's not always Kassem. It's not Kassem. Even if it's Kassem, I think there are other things that are also very important. So no mental health issue is small or trivial. Every mental health issue is important. Even if it is small, it is very important. Please let's not trivialize people's mental health experiences. Let's listen to them if we can. In a situation where we can't, let's please guide them and then direct them to the right places to get help. This is a topic that I'm very interested in. We can all advocate in our own little ways. You don't have to go through the experience. You can also um, have friends out of... Well, our parents, I'm telling you, most of our parents are going through a lot of mental health issues that they don't open up about because they think they're adults. You look, like, you look at your mother and she's not happy and you know she's going through a lot. But how do you even let, get your mother to open up? That is the issue that we are faced with. Ghana, we are struggling because mental health issue is not a problem, but please, I would encourage, my time here is short, so I would encourage that if you have the opportunity to advocate, if you have the opportunity to talk to people, if you have the opportunity to link somebody to someone, please do before it is too late. Thank you for listening. Thank you. This is so inspirational. We can do it better for you. So many of us are going through a lot, and I feel this should encourage us. All right, we now on our third and final presentation, and we're taking it from our very own Mrs. Gloria Watsman. She's a psychologist. Hello, Mr. President. 
sitting, watching, looking, and I believe that God has given you the practical aspects, things that you've learned today, and I'll be randomly asking questions. I believe that some of you who ask questions have received their chocolates. Oh, let me say number of you have got chocolates. Yes, that is to show how much we appreciate your confidence in asking questions. Some of you are going through a lot and you decide to keep to yourself. That is fine. But after today, I believe that we'll all be fine. So from this room, I'm going to ask what you learned today from all the things that um, God has talked to you about on suicide not being an option and the fact that your mental health is very important. So I've learned that everything that's worrying me if something is not going on well with me, if I'm going to something, I should open up to the professional. <laughs> someone in the profession and not to my friends or someone on social media. And I shouldn't think um, other people's issues so, uh, like something small. I shouldn't trivialize it and make it something small. That's all. I'm asking. Oh. Nice, nice, nice. So I think she saved your room. Or somebody else wants to talk. Okay, so give her a chocolate. You want to talk? All right, let me come there. Don't mind me, stand small. So you have a mic. Somebody who just gets out to think of committing suicide. I have been suicidal. I'll share my story very soon and then I'll zoom you into motivating you not to give up. Okay. So let's take the next line. I'll okay. call the gentleman since I'll take the gentleman here and then I'll take I wanted to call random, you know the people who have been talking. I mean, let's listen to this lady. What did you learn? Because after today we need to see changes in our lives. We need to be there for our friends and all that. So I'll be randomly calling. Okay, let's try it. We should try and cope and adjust to the people around us. Um, that will be a. Um, um, we can show that we are mentally stable. All right. So if you're mentally stable, you should know how to cope with people. Very important point. Yes. You still behind? Let me take this lady. What's your name? Christine. All right. Again, what have meant, mental health people are not, they don't look like kids. Sometimes they are happy and all that, so we have to be careful and know how to approach All right, so no, no, not everybody who is smiling is actually happy, like um, my sister said. Sometimes you might be going through something that is so difficult, like today. I mean, I'm not really, really fine, but I'm fine because that's what I do and I believe that I have life. I can't just bump into my, I mean, my car, and I'm like, oh my god, I was coming to your place. And it's been happening like, I mean, for the past two weeks. Anytime I'm going to have a program like this to talk, that's what happened. Okay, so I was a bit down, and I just thought to myself, like, oh, I have life. Let me just jump into a mobile and what. So sometimes, what I want to say is that the things you cannot control, just leave it to God. The things you can control, just manage and make it happen, okay? Like I'm making it happen, right? Yes. All right, so let me take one more and then. All right, let's take the gentleman. Okay, so I also want to add my contribution. Or let me see my opinion of what you have. I've learned that when someone is having a mental problem, you don't have to go and talk to the person just like that. You need to recommend the person to a professional who can help um, save the person from that difficulty or problem. That's what I've learned today. Wow, that's powerful. I think we can end with that. All right, how many of you struggle when you're getting up to stand? I mean, did you just get up or you had to hold something? Okay, let's sit again. Let's sit again. And let's get up again. Did you just get up or you tried holding something? All right, so that's how life is. You see, sometimes when you go down, the issues become so much to the extent that you want to give up. But you know, you try getting up because you need to be up. It's very important to be up because you have life. There's a lot ahead of you. There's so much that don't let these small, small things 
relationship problems, the boy left you. Now, who is the boy anyway? You understand? Your mom and dad gave birth to you from age to now. And you just want a gentleman who you just met a few years to just take your life because the boy says he doesn't want you. You can, you don't want the guy, you're just managing. Um, and the guy, the guy who says he doesn't want you or the girl says he doesn't want you. You can, you also didn't like the girl because when you're dating the girl, you had like three, four girls. And you're just trying to see if it's, it's a work. So please, you see how life is. Sometimes you go down. That's why I like that book as well. Go. Not because of anything, but the fact that you go down, and when you are going down, you are coming up. You go through so much. By the end of the day, you are out. Are you not out? So let's have a seat. And let me share my story. All right. <laughs> so um, when I was in SS, okay, I used to be happy. I was a daddy's girl, but now I'm also too, so I think that even though it's very small, but I'm fine. And then I lost my dad. My dad was, I was very close to my dad. And my, you know, when you're a little girl, there are so many questions that you have. Even my children ask me some questions, and I think that, hey, this question is too, do I need to answer? So it was that, that man who always answered, even if it doesn't make sense. So I'm like, how am I going to live my life? I mean, <laughs> Nobody, you know how that is to be something. I mean, no man was around, but I was very close to my dad. So I was really, really, really hurt. And I tried committing suicide several times. Okay, there was just one uh, sermon that saved my life. So when I was growing up, my mom said I was a prophecy child. Like, I mean, those ones that you go to the church and they will prophesy that you're going to give birth to this girl. And it's going to change the world, and I think I'm part of my world. And then I came. So even though I tried, I couldn't. And then I had one pastor preaching, saying that sometimes you lose the people you love, and I believe that some of you can relate. There are people that you love so much that they have to go. You can't do anything about it. I mean, even if you kill yourself, you even go and meet the person there. You will be in a different place. So sometimes you need to make them proud. That is what changed my life. You need to make them proud. Because I believe those times my dad my dad was always on my case with my school. I mean reading. He built the confidence in me as in speaking to you. I didn't go to any grooming to go and learn to come and stand here or speak to you guys. I mean I believe that my dad did a very good job in grooming me to be confident. So I'm able to speak my mind, I'm able to tell you the truth. If you do something I don't like, I don't know how to pretend if, I, if you've done something and I don't like, okay? So I'm not one that will come and stand here and want to pretend to you, or want to show that, you no, know, I'm actually telling you my life so that it can motivate and inspire you. So yes, it happened, and then I changed my mind, decided to make my dad proud. So I decided to study hard, I was doing a cafe job to I mean, pay my fees, I was trying to do everything to make sure that I put myself on the right track. And also, I was always at church. I was believing God, because if you're a Christian, some of the issues become lighter, because there's nothing you can do when things go bad. The only thing is that you have God, and He will take care of you. So it happened. Kept pushing. I sold ice water before. I sold egg before. I, I mean, name them. I sold all those things before to help my mom raise us. It didn't spoil anything about me. If I didn't tell you, would you know? Yes. So sometimes the things you go through, the things you have to go through to make certain things happen, it doesn't mean that it is the end. Because the next person that is sitting behind you or beside you is your, I mean, a minister, is a president, is a doctor, I mean, somebody that you see, that you look down upon when you are in school. You see the person outside and go like, oh, Charlie. I mean, I'm not get rude to this person. What do I want to say? I want to say that no matter what you are going through today, I mean, levels will change. Because it's just a matter of time. When you came to GIG level 100, you, did you know move to level 200? Or you, did you know end the system, end the semester? And then you came back and you are continuing. Whether you got food to eat, you wore shoe, you didn't wear shoe, have you not moved on? So I want to tell you that no matter what you do, the clock is moving. 
It's either you are moving or you are just standing to watch the clock. So actually the clock will not stop because of you. Do you understand? So don't let anybody look down upon you. Don't, don't feel that because of that crisis that you are going through, so it's the end of the world. No. You just got started. Sometimes you need to go through so that you can also have a message. Okay? If I didn't go through all this, would I have a message from standing here? No. So relax, especially with the youth. Relax. The peer pressure, the everybody wants to flex, all those things. You are not living for anyone. If God is happy with you, forget the world. Turn to your neighbor and say, if God is happy with you, forget the world. If, if you are Muslim, if I like something, forget what. Because we, at this stage, you want to impress. You want to look good and then, oh, and then, oh, and then you I have been already like, when you take pictures, you edit. When you take pictures, don't be edit. Because you want what's the best version of yourself. So the things that you see there, you know, fake, most of them are what? They are just showing you where you want to go and do this. And I mean, you want to do so many things to be like somebody. There's something unique about you. What was the last time you sat down to ask yourself, God, you cry, why did you bring me on this end? Because that is what I did. I, will, I work with Coco Marketing. I'm a senior health and safety officer there. But I have a foundation called Wiglow Family International that is into suicide prevention. So if you have a phone there, you there, take, go to Instagram. Look for Wiglow Family International. It's a suicide prevention words. NGO. That's what we do. We talk to the youth. We inspire. We motivate. We don't want people to die by suicide. Because suicide is not a good thing. When you end your life without God ending it, you would have to answer for it. So live the life. Do not commit suicide. Do not die by suicide just because some boy be left you be. Some girl be left you. Mommy is struggling to make some money. Daddy is struggling for you to be in school and learn hard. Then you let this boy come and distract you, impregnate you, and the guy is going home. You have the kids five in front of you. And now you have to miss school for the boy. You have to, if you are not even lucky, the boy will deny you. And say, hey, I don't know where. But you've done the thing. And you are pregnant. And that because of that, you want to die. No. You give birth. You move. Or you move. Things will change. I just want you to have faith that things will change. It won't be the same. If today you don't have a dress, I think those times I used to wear my sister's shoe. Look at my clothes. Those who are close. Have you seen? My sister was size 38. I was 40. I didn't have a shoe, but I always wanted to wear. So I'm going to take the shoe now. Where the shoe will be packed. I'll be going. I'll be going. I'll be going. Hey! Why? All because shoe no day. You <laughs> so I want to wrap the shoe. So I was wearing 38. And now you see the scars I got. But did they kill me? See, things have changed. If I want to wear 10 shoes a day, I can wear. It's just a matter of time. So do not give up. Do not ever think that, hey, God, maybe I'm a big guard, yes, I'm a I mean, things can be better. If you are failing your exam, set up. Make time to learn and leave all the social media business. You are here to learn. Why don't you also learn and be a star so that somebody can be watching you? But you'll be watching them, watching them and wasting your time and you are there. Turn to your neighbor. 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 Learn to be a star to why? So that I can be watching you. So that you stop watching people to distract your, your life. Oh, you think I'm not a prison? Yes. Because you see this thing, people will be watching me. You'll be tempted actually. This top part here. And now you have to go and sleep with some trigger that you be or something to just get that thing. You rock what you have. Even if it's false, it's one. When you go home, wash it, hang it, tomorrow rock it. It is the way you will rock it. It's not the number of clothes you have. Because at the end of the day, you finish GIG. Some journalism or some company you will pick you and you'll be, I mean, all that's on the TV and my own. Uh, uh, will you remember that you are hustling? Mm, time will change. So let's just relax. 
learn hard, find your you, what's what you are here on earth to do. Don't be intimidated by anybody. Because those that you, are, you see, you admire, they have issues. But the issues are not on the forehead. But you small know, issue, you want to paint your hair with everything with the issue. When they say, oh, this girl, she has issues. No. Even if you have issues, please look good. And speak to professionals. Don't go and speak to your friend. And if you have a good friend, and if you are here, please be a good friend. Be a good friend. Because this person that is, you are helping today, tomorrow you might not know. Be a good friend. If somebody comes to tell you something, no oh, alarm blow everywhere. What is that? Girls will be like that. If you're like, a boy here, yeah, you're like that, then you, then you need special players. <laughs> because what is it? Football. Football, and who you don't even know, you want to die for them. That is what you talk about. So why would you want to go and gossip for somebody? Stigma. I mean, it's, it's spoiling things. And somebody doesn't feel good to even come to school because somebody said this. Some small thing that the person did. You know the kind of things we've done. There's no written on our face. But the message of God has seen us through. So if somebody has done something, you are judging the person. Have you judged yourself? The things you have been doing in secret on your phone, if it was all over, you think you are also pure like that. We all make mistakes. So when you make mistakes, or you see that your sister is in trouble, you don't have to judge your sister. But rather, you bring your sister close. You tell your sister that it will be well, everything will be fine. Don't go and spread. Hey, what's it? Hey! What's the name here? Georgina. Is there any Georgina? Oh, I'm not prophesying. <laughs> Is there any Amma? There's Sylvia. Sylvia. <laughs> Sylvia is as a yampa. Now so hey, what is Sylvia said no? Then if you are evil person. Anybody who hears about the story to go and share. If it's bad, you are an evil person. You want the person. Eh, if you if you are not evil, because one, your friend will feel bad. Two, your friend will not come to school. And one, it will distract the school exams. Her life. When you want to talk about, think about all those things. So the things that will cause, don't just open your mouth. Control yourself. Because those stigma and other things is what is killing people. You see, her, she came here very bold. She come and smile. I told her, I have something to say for me. I mean, to, I'm telling you my own. And I say, hey, this is kill. <laughs> you don't know. She's sharing a story to save her life. If not anything, somebody knows that. This suicide that we've been preaching, it's not an option, no. it's not, it is true. Because until we make it a reality, the government will also not take it on. Even though they know it's happening, but you, those who go through when you speak, they will know that, no, this thing, it looks like it's real. Because if I haven't gone through and I'm talking to you about it, you think I'm joking. Ah, and then we're so, we could know. Yes, every day, 40 seconds, somebody is killing themselves. And their age is from 15 to 24. Or 25. This age, adolescent, confusion age, exams, school baby, boyfriend, girlfriend, even you, divorce from home, trouble. Even deciding to the courses you want to, trouble. Your parents are choosing the courses for you, trouble. And confusion everywhere in your life. Am I lying? Sometimes you know you go and tell your mommy about certain things. As they say, look at JIJ, like what am I? Maybe that's not what you want to do. You don't want to be a journalist. Or oh, is it the only people here? If you come to share this, you don't want to be a journalist. What else? PR. You don't want that public thing. Okay. Not by force. If you want to be some stats girl, be statistical, working mass, and all that. PR, you can't speak in public and all. You don't want to, I mean, but if your mother says, that is what you do, your father, you are even confused whilst you are in a class. It's painful. At that stage, too, you know, if you say you don't do it, you don't pay off it. You have to do confusion. So when you now you now you are confused. So you see how life is. You can't control it. You can't do anything about it. So what do you do? You leave it. So that we can chance on your parents and say that the things you choose for your children, you have to be careful because it stresses them sometimes. And when they choose for you and you like it to learn. These boys, they don't have money. You know, they just came like UK. Their father and mother gave them money. How can somebody that is being given money take care of you? Can you imagine? Indomie and Toffee. 
at this stage, where you are braiding your hair, how much? You see, all this stress. So these boys, they are lying, you boys, they are lying. And you girls, you have nothing to offer. Keep yourself. Take care of yourself. Learn hard. And be whoever you want to become. Who wants to be a doctor here? <laughs> if you want to be a doctor, you will be a journalist. And working with the BBC and then this. Are you here? Okay. So please learn. Okay. Learn hard. Love yourself. There, there are some of the things you need to know. First thing, you should love yourself. If you don't love yourself, nobody will love you. And you know that the pe only true person that can love you is God. Do you know that? Yeah. Aside from God, people will love you when they feel that you've done something like, oh, I love you. Then tomorrow, no, they change their mind. Even in marriage, in relationship, it's the same. It's God. God is the only one who can love you. And no matter what you do, God will still want to us. love you. Your mother, somebody says my mother, you see? So you have somebody who loves you. So you love yourself, God loves you. You don't care whatever happens around you. You don't expect that when you wear something, somebody will say that, hey, it's nice, that's when you feel happy. No, 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 no. When you wake up in the morning, these are things I want you to practice. You stand in the mirror, see, do it. If I get up, do a new thing. Those who are living, I have gifts for you, so you go. Do a U10. Some of you need to have some self-confidence. U10, you. Or 360. <laughs> so do a 360. And mention your, your name. Oh, Gloria. Oh, Gloria. I am wonderful. Me. Oh my God, look at my skin. Hey, Charlie, this girl, you are pretty old. If you are going to say, Charlie, this girl, you are handsome old. Tell me, just do like this. Hey, check me out. Charlie, 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 you are too good. Tell me to your friend. Friend, you better be nice to me now. Because you might be standing with a precious man or woman. You might be standing with some president or minister. So watch out. Don't treat me bad. Love me just the way I am. Because God made me so. And make sure you're like, oh, Gloria. I love you. Give yourself a hug. Give yourself a hug. When was the last time you gave yourself? Give yourself a hug. Come for yourself. How do you feel? What do you feel good? Everyone, when you wake up, now it comes to that. If you don't have a mirror, you just go, hey. Some people don't take selfies because it depends on my face. Like, yeah. Yeah. Me, I like pictures, so whether I'm looking good or not, you are appreciating the goodness of the Lord of your life. And you don't care whoever is thinking that you are not nice or not in any business. Your business is that you know that you are confident, you are bold, you are smart. If you are not smart, you'll be here to pass a SSN basic, I think it's easy. Yes. So you are smart. Any teacher who tells you they are born, no, it's just a matter of time. Do you understand? It's just a matter of time. Well, some of the bosses know. First time is difficult. Like I said, we will say, yeah, fresh out now. Fresh out is when you just say, you were there, we teach you. They just say, relax. I'm going to blow that people for you. Because that is how the stuff that when you get in there, you just say, you be brave. Because it's not done so. But you take it one at a time. And then you put the, if you're a teacher here, you're doing that to stop. Because what I don't like is teachers who always say negative about children or students. Whatever you tell them is what, what they said they are what's mind. Maybe if your teacher tells you you're not smart, nigga, you are smart. Oh, uh, you know, when I was in school, I was not the best student. I was not an average. In fact, men rain man up that for their lives. Ah, but today you see me, do you see any? Some of the things that we learned in school, I didn't even practice. 
That is why I'm telling you that pray that God shows you your purpose in life. So that you don't waste time and when we're doing archaeology, babology, and all those things. We don't use them. Yes, we now go for that way, we now find out the theology way. Yes. So pray that God show me my the reason why I'm on earth. Maybe this is my reason. I found my purpose and I'm, it's so fulfilling for me. Because of through all the things I'm going to read, I only understand here. If I do this, I feel like I feel so refreshed. Because I'm saving a life. I'm motivating somebody. I'm inspiring somebody. And the next time I'll see, yes, oh, you were the one, you were the one. Yeah, I'm kind of you. So you were the one, yes, yes. You see, you're impacting your life. So whatever you are doing, know that you are writing a story about yourself. Don't dent your story. When you make mistakes, get up and rock it beautifully. Sometimes you make mistakes, you see people be talking, talking, leave them, let them talk. When you're coming, take the aggressive to another level and just kind of cut it off. When I was, I was in school, I was at Atlanta, I wasn't wearing trousers. I think this person was like, hey, Atlanta, Atlanta. When I just got there, I said, hey, I saw somebody's leg was cut. I said, ha, ah, if that person is rocking their leg, how long is that? And then I started, hey. You know, it's all about confidence. Whether you are short, you are tall, you don't have, you don't have, that is what's sweet, that is how God has made you. Love yourself. In fact, give yourself a hug again. Give yourself a hug. Uh huh. Don't let anybody intimidate you because you are beautiful, you are handsome, you are smart. I mean, name them. You are talented. You are unique. How many black who check around? Who looks like you here? Point your name to she doesn't look like you. Even though you are wearing spender. Even your spender look like different. If you don't look like her. So why do you want to compare yourself with other people? Eh? Why do you compare yourself? Don't compare yourself. I'm here to say that I love you all. I know that you can make it. I know that you one day stand here and remember what I told you. That you love yourself. Be around positive people. You can say it. So I'm giving you one point to me. That's how I talk. So as I'm talking, pick, 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 and let's go. So I said you should love yourself. And don't forget that what God loves you. That's the ultimate. God loves And they be around positive people. If you have this friend who's always hey, 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 Charlie, don't be there, I'm scared to you. And then, I mean, forget that person. You know, you need to speak positive. When you speak positive, it happens. Because you believe that it will happen. Negative vibe, dear. Yeah. No, no, no. Tell, tell, tell your friend. Negative vibe, dear. Yeah. No, 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 no. Some people are negative. The fear, even the thing has not happened. You are analyzing. Actually, I said, you see. Why? Can you control the things that happen in this world? It's only God. So control the ones that you can. And if you think that your friend will come and distract you, oh, there's our friend, say, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You know what? You are always positive. Regardless, you move. Positive. Be positive. Be positive. If you're positive, you know, you tell me, what you are thinking of, you know, you are some minister or some president, be. So once you are walking, you are physically walking, but inside you, what you carry, that is the picture. I mean, you picture there and you move. You be, you be at school. You think this is the best man. And you see somebody who's friends. Hey, you get no one phone. I mean, they're not fine. Do you know the issues the person also has? Hmm? Love yourself. Be around positive people. And know that God loves you. And do what makes you happy. How many of you like to write? Write. Do you know? How many of you like to watch movies? How many of you like to sing? Oh God, my love. <laughs> How many of you? Uh -huh. How many of you like to exercise? The exercise, everybody has to exercise. So the things that you love to do, anytime you feel down, jump on them. Always do what you want. Love to do. Exercise, write. If you can't talk, start writing. Write, write, write.
Je fais tout ça, on est crac, 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 nous t'es venu que Jésus. Là, on est venu. Et aussi, on regarde ça, on est crac, crac, on est crac. Ah, et il est happy. Mommy, I like to give pictures. It makes me happy, actually. I appreciate it. Because sometimes I see the old pictures, I say, hey, it's a little bit of me. You know, you just want to compare and see the goodness of the Lord. Not because you are showing up. You understand? So the things you love to do, continue what? I'll give you how many. Hey, you forgot to love yourself. God loves you. What is the vibe in the one can cry and get in here? And for do what's what? Five, exercise. Exercise. It's very good. When you exercise, the brain becomes very smart. Sometimes you don't need to go and run around. Just wake up and start doing some. Right now you have phones. Some simple, simple, simple exercises and you are good to go. Okay? Okay? Are you okay? Yes. And also I want to talk about confidence. Without confidence, your case will not be anybody's case. Even if you know that thing and you can't speak, who will be? It's something that I see in lots of ladies' battle. I can see the number of people who are confident in this room. The confidence ones always want to take the mic and they want to speak. There are some people, they are not. It's not like they are not public speakers. It's not like they too are, they are not confident. But they are scared. I mean, go by. Now, I mean, it's part. Being confident comes when you love yourself and you know who you are in God. Not knowing who you are like, oh, Papa will scan now, mommy. That one, forget that one. Because your mother can die. My father died. This is me. I still die. So, uh, I didn't even think that I was sell that. I was selling, I was going. That one, they can die. My mother, hey, anything can happen to all those things. But what about you? Who are you? Who are you? Hmm? It is about you. And it is about God. Me, I'm a Christian, so you hear this one thing. That's what you put to that in life. But God, if you don't have God, forget it all. Because some of the places you went to and time pass, pass, pass. I'm standing here talking to you. It's just by mercy. You put your hand on your head to so God, mercy. Mercy, Lord. Forgive me, oh. And put me on the right track. Because that is the only way. Oh. For me, I can't have, I don't have anything to give you. Even if God doesn't touch it, my, touch my heart, I can't help you. So instead of going to ask people for money and all this, pray for them. You see that they tell you, say, oh, look, I was looking for you. Take, 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 take. You see, if you go and beg. No, you work on them in your room. I pray. How many of you are friends? Hey, that's how I how I put it. Share the leg, share the leg, put it. Be praying, you. Instead of that, what midnight are you chatting, chatting? Pray. If you are sleeping at 12 midnight, they are also chatting on you. So share the words. Share the words. Keep sharing them. And visit my church. Only you chant. That is where the words. Uh huh. It's the only place your life can change. And you now you see that, hey, God is making. Hey, I'm talking about my, I have the mic, Anna. So I'm talking about your confidence. If you have confidence, you can make the mic eh, and talk about yours. But please, let's love ourselves. Let's be confident. Let's try to be able to speak on issues. Wherever you find yourself, if you don't speak on issues, they will not hear you. If you can't speak right, people are good at writing. You can write and push it in wherever you want to put it. Instead of the social media that you'll be talking about, people put it there. Mental health is important. Suicide is not an option. I mean, you did it, you did it, you did it, I mean, it will save somebody. Because people are dying. That is why my heart beats. And I'm standing here with you. So after this one, and I hear any case, say, trouble. Please. Okay? What loves you, okay? I also love you, okay? So don't give up, oh. learn hard. When you fall, get up again, move. Anything that is bothering your mind. Mommy and daddy's issues, they are not your issue. Mommy and daddy's issues, now I'm sore, now I'm Leave them, when they were against my wedding day. They didn't even 
you know, they have to make sure that they are taking care of you. They are taking care of you. Leave them alone and pray for them. But sometimes, mommy and daddy, they have issues, and then you, you want to carry the issue and make it your own. So it's disturbing your studies. Pray that God takes care of them. When your mommy and daddy gives you something, appreciate and show that she crash because it will change. Levels, tell your friend, levels will change. Levels will change, oh. Like me, I'm here. Hey, if I show you my picture, you will be surprised. Levels are strange for me. So levels will change for what? You don't give up. You never ever think of taking your life. Because there's something bright, something glorious ahead of you. Okay? Okay? okay. Do you have any questions for me? Ask questions. And also, uh, we have a volunteering team, so those who, when they are free time, instead of moving around, doing things that don't necessarily, you go to schools like this, you go to speak, you have big programs and all that, so that you can be joining and also learning. Those who want to also be activists like I am, I can't be the only one. All of you have to come on board. I will train everybody so that in your own corner you brighten it. You save life. You will pass your generation. You won't just be, and she came and she died. She <laughs> might be in bed and she died. You go on Google. Let's try something. And Google your name. Let's Google our names. Of course, social media and other things to pop up. Google, don't go to Instagram. Google your name. And let's see if they have any write up about you. Google your name. Because everybody needs to impact. So Google your name. If you are one that's posting good things, Google will recognize you. If you are posting, have you Googled yourself? I didn't say go to Instagram. I said go to Google and Google your name. And let's hear what Google wants to say about you. Have you seen it? <laughs> what do you see? Number. Uh, <laughs> yes, they're putting that I'm a diploma student, so GIJ. How GIJ people? If not for GIJ, who more did you know you? But GIJ has the information, so of course, Google what? And everything that you are doing in this your social media, it will pick it up. Oh. Do you know that? So it's like you are writing up a story, good or bad. So you Google my name, let's see. If I want to steal something, they'll put it there. My name is Gloria Bortma Ando. So I just want to say that everything that you are doing in life, you are writing a story about yourself. What story are you writing? What story are you writing? What do you see about me? Am I a thief? Am I a suicide prevention actress? How many of you are on YouTube? All of you. So go to the New Family International. I'm telling you that you are branding yourself as you are walking and putting things on your status and Facebook. So if you are putting bad things there, it will be there. If you are putting bad things about you, it will be there. If you are impacting your world, it will be there. So make sure that from today, everything that you do, think about it twice. Would you want to see it in the future? Or you don't want to see it. If you don't want to see it in the future, don't put it there. If you want to see it in the future, you are impacting your world. Keep what? Posting. 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 Good. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. So it's called what? Branding. Today, there, I'm giving you lectures. So I think that's our end soon. So that if you ask, you want to ask me anything, I will tell you what. Because branding is very important. What about you put there? You see, what have you seen so far? A lot of things, right? I'm impacting my, my world. I'm impacting the youth. I'm impacting whoever I meet. You can't meet me or go the same. I'm not Jesus Christ, but I have the blood of Jesus in me. So you can't meet me and want to kill yourself. You can't meet me and want to look down upon yourself. You can't meet me and want to feel that you are a nobody. No way, okay? So love yourself. 
take good care of yourself. Do not do the bad things. Even though it is not easy in this world, temptations will come back freely. Okay? Learn hard. I want to see you all again. Happy and ministers, pastors, the richest women and men, journalists, BBC, I mean, everywhere, you are everywhere. And be interviewing people. See, hello, one auntie wants to interview me. And go, oh, I know you. Then I also put my English, you know, that, okay. Then I start, because you know, it's for more hard. Me both. But we so so yeah, try. But we'll be fine, okay? Don't give up. Giving up on yourself there is no good. Let's all be on our feet. And I want to take how many people? I need two girls, two boys. How many of you? Confident building and no one here. So if you are bold, walk to me. Uh -huh. Yeah, come as many as you can. Come, come. Don't be scared. Because I, I need confidence. So, this is my first volunteer zone. My year exercise. You see? Okay. So, you like now. We are coming to do something short. And please, you and Jim, if you are here, this is going to be your face of you and Jim. So, you are professional activities. So, you better check them out. So, imagine all of you, there's something I want you to do very practical. I come to you, I start with you. Oh, it's not easy for me this day to so my sister. Do you act here too? Drama, waiting. Let me create it. I'm sad. I feel like giving up my sister. How will you go with it? Let me do it. Let me do it. Let me Good. First of all, you listen. You know she listened to me and she asked, What's your problem? Look at it. Oh, Pessa! And then we are now going to go, please, please, please. You know they are both like that. Yeah. Everything is like a joke. When you are serious talking about issues, what did they have come? Oh, please, please, please. But first of all, she was, she listened and you held her. Laugh for her. What's your name? Is there chocolate finish? So first of all, you listen. When somebody comes to do with an issue, she listened and she was, she, she held me by the was What is that problem? Very soft words. That's good. Very soft. Yeah, so I don't want to talk with you. Let's have to see and then talk about it. I mean, you see that this nice to dress up and all of a sudden you tune in and now baby. What is the first sign that you think you yeah, I mean, what should what do you think that the person is going to do? Something might be wrong with the person. Good. Something might be wrong Because if you see somebody who is very, very up a life, uh, dress up, uh, now they lose any chewing and now um, iron shirts, everything, but uh, the shoe not clean. I mean, you could see that no, this is not my friend. It means that there's something wrong. You have to go close. My brother, I want to show you. Like you said. You might say, hey, have you seen this boy today? The child is not to say, I'm one more, oh no. But the person is going to a, a face, and the person needs help. So, what identify, I'm showing you so that you can also see. Not me alone, I'll see your brother. Oh, my sister was wrong with I want everybody to see like I'm singing. Yeah. Okay, good. Chocolate, please. My brother. My brother. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Then I leave. 
I go to my room. Good support, support. Some of you, you are stingy. Sometimes you know that the person wants to die or wants to die. A comedy in the camera. Go school. Go to school now. I will say, catch no day. Go to the side. What's up? I don't know. What did they talk? Let me go chop. But you, you will not go and chop. You try to go and What is that? Oh, those are standing sit down. So that we can watch the acts. So first of all, the signs of somebody who is suicidal is what I'm doing now. So some of you take the signs, and some of you take what you have to do. So it's fine, now I'm actually sure. Okay, chocolates. My brother. When you go to the hospital, you want to see the psychologist or whatever it is that you want to see. Or the and so on. Okay. I'm giving you the answer, but I'll still ask. So when you go to the, I mean, when you go to the hospital and you are mentally stressed, you are depressed, you are, I mean, you feel very uncomfortable. I mean, life is through, you know, the hell on you. Who is the best person to see? The psychiatrist. The psychiatrist or what? Psychologist. And what did we say? Um, the, and what did we um, say that I mean, when you go to the hospital right now, they, they, they are all scattered everywhere. So you are seeking for professional words, help. Just like malaria, it's, your parents will carry you to go to see the doctor. It is the same way when you are stressed, you are depressed. You have to go to the hospital you want. See the word psychiatry. Okay, next. So my brother. <laughs> Today they are brothers who when you wake up in the morning and you feel down sometimes as an individual, sometimes it happens. What is what is the first thing you should do? You need to encourage your own self. What? How do I help myself? By believing in oneself and think that if you don't do it, nobody else will do it for me. Okay, that's a good point. First of all, I'll say that I'll pray. Yes. Because sometimes it's not only. You know, mental health is physical and spiritual. I'm sure you know that. Okay. So you pray and you look for yourself in the mirror, like I said. What do you see? Ah, God. Flow me, let me see. What do you see? Yes. I mean, sometimes you can be, you look good. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, swag it well, swag it well. Okay. I look good. Uh -huh. God created me. Ah. Yes. I believe in myself. Yes. There is hope. Yes. I will make it. Yes. I will carry myself. Uh -huh. So, that is it. Encourage yourself. So, with this group, put it together. Because if somebody is coming to gossip and you say, eh, that is it. A bit worse. So, what would you also say? Hey, why are you like mounting a person in front of you? Why don't you get master the courage and say that you're going to do something? Tell that person right in front of him or her. Why are you telling me you are disgracing the person? Maybe the person didn't plan to fail. So, why are you doing that? It's not fair. Oh, do. That's absolutely amazing if you knew. So when somebody fails in school and then 
you hear now, people concern. The next one, God will try and make you feel. So it's always good to push the person away by saying, oh, no, 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 don't do that. Sometimes we fail. You see? Sometimes, so I'm trying to say that don't encourage what that is it. Negative, positive vibe. Wow. So is your group safe? Last group. This day, I can't do it. 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 I can not do it 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 i can when you when you are doing something, you have to be at the top immediately. It's all about time. It's all about taking your time to clap for her. What is it? Your name? Asantoa. Ah, Asantoa. Good, good. Okay. Next, everybody. This one, everybody else is something. Okay. okay, so basically, what she said is about steady. So if I'm able to help the person in the subject, he or she doesn't understand. I'll tell the person to show them the time. And we talk to stage and then from there. Good shot for say You see, you see, if you are good at that subject, you encourage the whole. Don't worry, I'll make some time and I'll teach you. Um, we are demonstrating this because this is what happens in school, and people feel very, very bad and don't want to come to school again. Or sit on exams, a whole lot. So flow. So first of all, I'll ask you the reason why you are here. Are you here? For because you want something, or you are just you are just here. If you are here because you have a reason, or you want to achieve something, then keep pushing, keep pushing. Like avoid that kind of negative thoughts yes. and put on some positive vibe. Ah, positive vibe, peace. You see, positive vibe. Because I carry somebody. Else. Don't just think that we are joking. Up, we are teaching. That is me, my style. I'm not there. Presentation type. This is what, because I know that moment like this is what people, children, and parents and kids capture. Sometimes it is not about the book alone, but the event that happens around you is what sometimes it pictures and they are like, hmm, I did it by another kind of power. So please, you are not joking. I'm serious. Who will you also say? Okay, I will, I will ask you to get over it. Relax for the meantime. And then I'll ask you where you are having challenges. And then I will help them. Good. That's good. Okay, so um, personally, I might have been in that situation. So I'll use my personal experience. Oh, give me a hand. <laughs> like my experience. That's what I'm also sharing to make sure that's what I almost everything I do is for sharing. And so I couldn't be down. But it's a matter of what? Fine. Clap for them. And those who are still now, what have you learned from the both are creative what? Oh, you, you have to be acting with your people on this thing, so and please ask and send it to me so I will push it. What have you learned? Okay, so I've learned that in anything that we go through, there is always a solution. So we should always take our time and solutions always the Next. Anybody here who wants to talk? If you don't have chocolate, please, or that's the only gift I have for you. Okay, so, as a person that 
I should always encourage myself, no matter how the circumstances be, no matter what the situation will be, there is a better future ahead. So I should always encourage myself. All right, so we can have our seats. Let's clap for ourselves. I'll be, I'll be wrapping up. I've had a very wonderful time. We want to talk to you. Um, I've also learned that any situation you find yourself or any, if you make any mistake in life, you shouldn't let that mistake waste you down. You should rather get up and speak positively about yourself and then uh, build yourself up so that you can uh, be successful. Build yourself up. Okay. So, and then you'll be interviewing some people from them, all the people that want to speak, how the program works for them, what they've learned, where, where they are going to, okay, they to have impact have, their world. I've learned that whether you need to develop trust with the right person. Without trust, you can never open up to the person. So, with it, you should develop trust. So, you say that you should trust, not everybody. You know. Sometimes you need to study the person. You can only trust God for now. And then the people that you think that can help you, like he's saying, they can open up to them. All right. So let's be on our feet. I like to exercise for the last. This is for the last. Mention your name. I. I glory about Nando. I didn't hear your name. I'm going to impact my world. I glory about my Nando. I'm going to be a game changer. Watch me now. I'm coming after you. Not to pursue you, but to show you love. To save your life. Save your life. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Suicide. Suicide. It's not an option. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Suicide. Suicide. It's not an option. All right. So let me say a prayer for you. Close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of this precious woman. Father, in the name of Jesus, any power of depression. They live their life now in Jesus' name. Anybody battling with issues with studies, with home, with relationships, with financial issues, Father, send helpers. Father, send helpers. May these children, as they live here, may their life never be the same. May they go out there and shine. May they impact their world. May they be the reason why people will watch them and say, no, because of what you told me, I will not give up. Father, protect them. Preserve them. You pray for their teachers. Give them peace and love so that they can love every student no matter what. Whether the person is good or not, they will help build these children. And when they grow, they will never forget to give you all the praise. This and many other blessings I ask for your children in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 So we are also to stream Happy Teachers Day to all your teachers. Because this Teachers Day, without them, we are not here. You see, he brought us here to just make sure that you guys are impacted. So what do you say? Happy Teachers Day.
you will meet me in the library annex. When you get to the library, there is another building by the library that is not in use. Yes. That is where I am every Thursday. So you can come around if you have anything you want to discuss with me. I'll spend the whole day Thursday there so we can talk. But if the, the, the need be that we speak on phone or you get to me via email or any other thing, you can let me do this contact. 0244 And I have your names and your contacts here as well. I'll be sharing a link with you where if you want to. This one, I can only receive calls on it. But if you want us to get interactive on phone, WhatsApp or Instagram or Telegram, I'll share a link with you so you can get to me in that way too. If you want to send me a mail, you can get to me at counseling at jij.ab.ch. It's also here. Counseling. The counseling is spelled with a double L. Counseling at jij.ab.ch. We have an interactive platform where we share personal, not really personal experiences, but we bring up scenarios, what people go through in their daily lives, and we have intensive discussions on them. We have, we discuss them and find the appropriate ways to handle such cases when we are encountered with those issues. Apart from that, I am always available. You can call me, you can text me, and I'll hopefully be of service to you. I appreciate your coming so much, and I will especially want to thank our guest from Winglo Family International and our dog in his absence for making time for us today. The day has been so beneficial to all of us, and we're looking forward to more engagement with them. I try. I invited a couple of students. I they volunteered to come today to share their experiences with us, but they, did, they couldn't make it. But we are so grateful for your presence, Madam. Miss Sandra, we really appreciate you for coming. Thank you. I am so grateful for your time, your patience, and everything have been so phenomenal. I am so grateful. And it's unfortunate when programs like this are being organized for students and when it has nothing really to do with their academic lives, they do not show interest. If it was to be in maybe a course they are offering, they would have been here in their numbers. But they feel issues like this do not really concern them. Issues of mental health concerns each and every one of us. Let's make it a priority and attend to sad programs. In conclusion, I just want to tell all of us that definitely suicide is not an option. Whatever thing you are going through, there is always a way out. Some of the reasons why people go into suicide, these reasons could have been solved by just a mere phone call. A mere phone call and the whole issue will be resolved. So we seek professional assistance, and I'm sure we will be, we'll be very fine. Once again, I thank you all for coming, and have an amazing day. I will give our people just two minutes to talk to us about their foundation. Then we'll take a good picture, and we are done. Good afternoon. So very quick about my name is Ellen, and I think a few of you know me. Old student of GRGT, so um, it's great to be back home to an extent. So I just want us to do this okay. All of you take up your phones. Take up your phones. Oh, you have data. You see the other one. Wi Fi, Wi Fi. Come again. There's free Wi Fi. Yes. 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 Yes.
Right. So just take out your phones and let's start this. We are doing this in on three different platforms. Let's all go to Instagram. You all have Instagram. Okay, let's go on Instagram. And I'll go to your phone and search for something. Okay. And type Wengo Family International. I will spell it for you. W E I G L O and Family. F-E-M-I-L-Y Do you see it? Kindly yeah. open it. Okay, and then smash on that follow button. The spelling is W-E-I-G-L-O That's Wayglo. And then family, F-E-M-L F-E-M-I-L-Y Do you all see it? W-E-I-N-G-L-O I missed the, the end, my apologies So W-E-I-N-G-L-O Then family Are you following? Turn on your notification button as well. Let's move next and then request to turn on that notification. Now, we go from the international is a suicide prevention uh, uh, organization. Okay, we often go on outreaches, and then that is our one of our platforms where you can always reach us. You find tips over there. You find some of the programs you've attended, and we equally have a podcast that will help you. Uh, it's called My Story, My Message. Where you can find other stories of people who have uh, recovered from suicide, right? So, are you still following? Okay, I, I see it's growing there. Right, let's go on YouTube. Now, let's go down on Instagram, let's go on YouTube. Okay, and type, uh, or in search, Wenglo, as in W-E-I-N-G-L-O again. Have we seen it? Have you all seen it? And YouTube, Wingo, W E I N G L O. Family International. We still see Wingo Family International. Okay. And then click on it and please click on the subscribe button. The good news is that we have we we uploaded an episode on my story, my message. Uh, this morning, it actually premiered on YouTube at 6 a.m. today. So you would find it in the video session. There's episode one, and then there's episode two. You can have time and then watch all the episodes. But for now, I would encourage you all to just subscribe, turn on the notification button because when we post, you always get a notification to go watch. Is that okay? We are going to create a platform and then have you all there so that whatever information we have for you and we keep you updated. Is that okay? Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Okay, on that note, we thank you all so much for coming and we'll take a quick group picture here after which we can close. So let's quickly move forward. Nice.